is really exciting because I have been meaning to come out to 250 Barbecue to meet both of you because your story is so incredible and so interesting. Congratulations on all your success. Fernando Gonzalez, Debbie Portillo, the owners, you're the pit master, you're the mastermind behind the business, and this makes a wonderful pairing because look what you've built. Fernando, tell me, how do you think you did this, especially opening up during the pandemic? We started at the farmer's market right before the pandemic. We were serving at the farmer's market or, or barbecue on, on a Thursday. And we were doing pop-ups in different restaurants and different uh, breweries uh, along Route 1. And we had this amazing response from the community. And I think since day one, this was a community spot. And then it was a no-brainer decision. We encountered this beautiful corner here in Riverdale Park, very close to the museum, uh, next to the train tracks, so we can light up the fire at 6 a.m. and listen to the train tracks or head into the Mark Station. It's such, such a, a, a community spirit around here. When we decided to open, we basically had no option. I mean, rent was due. It was, it was really um, like a leap of faith, right? Exactly. It was a leap of faith. Uh, oh, man. What do you think, Debbie? This was a dream, and now it's a reality. Your business is booming. People love it. They travel to come here to try your barbecue. You've opened up other locations. It is surreal and it is very much a privilege because for us, serving food that people enjoy, it's something that we are very proud of. We enjoy that. And speaking of the food, Fernando, you are obsessed with making the best Texas barbecue. T tell us about that. I have to be obsessed. You have to be <laughs> to, uh, to, to be able to run a, a smokehouse for 15 hours per day. Um, I'm very lucky to have an amazing pit crew now, but it's, it takes a long time. You, know, you really need to um, turn in into this low and slow approach to the meat, you know, to break down all that you know, good flavor into every single meat cut. You need to nail every single pound. And for people who don't know, how do you cook your meats here? We use no shortcuts at all. All wood, all good is like our signature act. Um, we take this low and slow approach to every single cut. Uh, we use white oak, uh, locally sourced. We are burning currently like a quart and a half per week, which is a ton. And we are using high quality, ethically sourced meats. We use simple rubs, mainly salt and pepper, salt and pepper uh, focus. We use prime quality meats. And then we tend the fire, start really early in the morning, and it's gonna be ready when it's ready. And it's ready at eight, 10, midnight. It takes a lot of patience, and he's a very patient man. I try to. <laughs> That's important, right? Not when, I'm, not when I'm washing dishes, though. I'm not, I'm not good for that. And that's interesting. Fernando washes dishes. I mean, you have to be involved in every step of the way. Debbie, talk about the family aspect of your business. I love that we are a team, and we have our specific responsibilities, and we try not to mess around with each other's responsibilities because that's when issues come in. <laughs> but he knows, uh, what I know what I have to do in order to make his culinary dreams come true. So that's how we have been able to manage it because running a family business, as many people know, it's very hard. And I have to say, I mean, Debbie, she's a third generation of women who own and operate restaurant, and we're very proud of that. And during this pandemic and during labor shortages, supply shortages, uh, fuel surcharges, and everything that's happening right now during um, nowadays with the hospitality industry, She's been the master brain, the master mind behind every single decision, how to tweak things around in order to make them work. I was gonna ask you, even though it's Texas barbecue, there are elements of your own culture you're bringing into your food. That was very important for us to show our heritage into the menu and to make it not as a forced nature, you know. Um, we wanted to do something really natural. Um, for breakfast in El Salvador, you get some refried beans, some cheese, some plantains. That's also in our menu. We have brisket beans instead of sweet bacon beans, uh, baked beans. We have brisket beans, we have caramelized pineapple, cucumber salad, we are grilling vegetables now. Um, what else do we have? Chamoy watermelon, refreshing flavors for the summer. 
Um, the plantains. Was, yeah, plantains, exactly. But it is yeah. not forced, it is because that is what we eat. And we want something from our heritage to be able to offer. And I think that's what makes it so great. Fernando, there are a lot of barbecue places throughout the area, but people are saying this is the spot. What makes it different? How did you make it so that people want to come here? I think our approach to barbecue is no shortcuts at all. No gas assistance, no electricity assistance, no liquid smoke, no pre-injections. Just the fire, the wood, and the high quality meat. And babysitting your fire for a long time, putting all the love into it. You can cook an amazing brisket, but if you don't know how to cut it, serve it, slice it, present it in an aesthetic way, or the ribs, or the sausages, then all the labor from three days before, it's just going to waste. And the so. staff learned that too. Yeah. So he trains the cutters for weeks before he's able to share a knife. So the staff understands that for us, every pound needs to be perfect because you never know when somebody is coming back and some, some people celebrate special occasions with us. And if we master special occasions, then we're not gonna be part of their wonderful memories. And we want to be part of their memories. We want to be part of their celebrations too. Yeah. Don't mess with my knives. Leave my <laughs> knives alone. <laughs>